Hi, I'm Museum Associate Joanna Abajaudi. And I'm the Museum Registrar Coordinator, Lee Wishner. Welcome to our museum storage space. In this area, we house over 15,000 objects, ranging 200 years in history, men's, women's, children's, accessories, anything that's worn on the body, we collect it here at the museum. So today we're going to take you through this space in our compact storage, our study collection, special collections, and we've pulled a few highlights to show you, and afterwards I'm happy to answer some of your questions. So let's get started. <laughs> so follow me, I'm going to show you some of our compact hanging storage. This is sort of how the museum world operates. These giant banks of hanging storage that we keep covered and out of the light and away from the dust. And this is a bank of Pucci clothing from mostly the 60s and 70s, but a few modern pieces as well. This one is from the 90s. Some items aren't strong enough to hang in the compact storage, so we pack them in archival blueboard boxes. And as I mentioned, we also collect accessories of all types, and everything along this wall is women's shoes, ranging from the 19th century all the way to present. I'm going to give you a little peek into one of those boxes that we just looked at in our shoe area. We're going to open it up. This was actually a custom box because this object was so large it needed its own storage space. We have archival tissue here and these beautifully embroidered boots are actually Tom Ford for YSL in 2004. So I'll let Lee pan there a little bit just to show you how gorgeous this design is with these red lacquered wedge heels and you can see that they're keeping their shape and that's thanks to a specialty mount it's made in archival ethafoam covered in Tyvek and then just a simple jersey covering here and that's going to really help these boots last and uh, stay preserved while they're in our care so I'll put them back and if you enjoyed this peek into our archival boxes. We invite you to join us every other Friday. We do an unboxing series. We go through the entire collection and just show you what's in our banks, in the archival boxes. It's a great way to learn the collection. You can find it on our Instagram page, at FIDM Museum. We have the entire series, which is about almost 75 at this point, on our YouTube channel. And you can also find it on our Instagram highlights. So we hope you enjoy. So we pulled a couple other shoe highlights from the collection. These are some of my favorites. Um, they're both fit for the stage and screen. Uh, this is actually a pair of shoes that belonged to Mae West, uh, the 1930s uh, film star, who was very petite and really loved uh, platform shoes to boost her height. These are ankle strap models made out of a printed silk. Um, they're from her personal wardrobe. And this pair is Christian Louboutin booties. You can see the signature red sole. There's pink satin in a Western style, encrusted with Aurora Borealis rhinestones and piped in gold leather. And they're very similar to a pair that was worn for a stage performance by Dita Von Tees, the legendary burlesque performer. Another designer you might love as much as we do is Franco Moschino, the Italian designer who was active in the 80s and 90s, really well known for his irreverent sense of humor and really whimsical fashions. Um, so we've pulled a couple of highlights of his collection today. We have these patent leather purses, the peace sign, and the iconic yellow happy face. These are both from the early 90s. Uh, we call them our emoji purses, even though obviously that was before texting with emojis was quite as popular as it is today. And then another really tongue-in-cheek jacket. This is called the Urban Survival Jacket. And it has everything a woman living on the go in the city might need. So we've got makeup brushes, um, perfume, nail polish, a compact, lipstick, mascara, nail file, even a comb and a brush, and then of course, a little mirror on a chain. And if you follow the current House of Moschino, you know that Jeremy Scott is really keeping Franco Moschino's aesthetic alive in all of his um, super fun, whimsical designs. So I have one more little unboxing for you. This is one of the earlier pieces that we're gonna see today. 
It is an extraordinary blue silk satin corset. I'm just going to lift this out of the box very carefully. It is on a custom mount to keep its shape. And this would have been the fashionable shape for underneath your garments in the period. Um, it really helped train your waist. And the extraordinary thing is that there's all these tiny little embellishments and needlework stitching that, you know, nobody would actually see. This is all underneath your clothes. So it's really extraordinary to think that this much work went into something that very few people would get to see. Our last stop in this museum storage area is a few highlights that Lee and I have pulled for you. We're going to start with this early 1970s Marimekko dress, a Finnish designer. You might be familiar with the name Marimekko. They've done a ton of collaborations, uh, including most recently with Uniqlo. And so we just have a really colorful printed dress here. And Marimekko is really known for these loose silhouettes with bright, fun colors. Moving on to a Courage piece. Andre Courage, early 1960s. Um, I love the juxtaposition of this dress because it looks really sweet with the flowers and the embroidery, bright cream color, but then you can see that it's over this illusion panel, so it's completely see-through. You can actually see the um, mannequin seams underneath there. And of course, that 1960s really high hemline. We've put it next to a 1940s wedding gown gown is from 1947 and it is Christian Dior and 1947 was the first year he was in business so this is a really rare example to have it was Dorothy Chandler's wedding dress if you're familiar with the Los Angeles area you might know we have the Dorothy Chandler Music Hall just down the street from us here in downtown LA um, and if you can see the materials are just so wonderful really really high quality what you would expect from French couture probably all hand sewn um, and you know the silhouette might not look too controversial to us at this time But what you have to remember is this would have been just after World War II So having this much material for a gown was still pretty unheard of um, So she has this really nice big full full silhouette And then we're going to jump into the 90s with this candy colored Carolina Herrera This uh, little mini dress was featured in a Vogue spread in the 90s And you can see it has a super super high empire waist and then really gorgeous beading here. And I absolutely love this navy and lime green color contrast. Our final piece, we're gonna go back to the 1960s. This is designer Norman Norell. These are all hand cut silk petals and all hand dyed as well. So you can see just what an impression this coat would make. Norman Norell was really well known for these sleek um, sequined gowns called mermaid gowns in the 1960s and 70s and we've paired this dress this coat with uh, one of our hot pink mermaid dresses so that really really sleek dress underneath with all of this volume of the flowers on top it would have made quite an impression hi we've moved locations uh, we're now in our study collection storage part of my job is actually to be the study collection manager um, this collection is hands-on, so actually we don't need to be wearing gloves. And it goes into the classroom, and it's for uh, instructors and students to use. Um, students are also welcome to make individual appointments if there's a certain topic that they want to study or a certain designer. Um, all of the museum resources are, of course, available to our students, and we absolutely love um, working one-on-one -on -one with projects. So we always invite students to make appointments, to give us a call, and see how we can help. So what we've done is we've pulled a rack, just sort of an example of what we might bring into a classroom, and we're going to show you uh, a few highlights um, from the selection we have here. So we're going to start with this 1920s dress. This is called a robe de steel, and I pulled this because it's a little bit different than the typical 1920s silhouette that you might be used to, that straight columnar up and down. Um, this has a little bit of extension at the hips, and that is because it has these very, very small panniers that you can see here on the side, little, little hoops that are suspended at the hips. So this is a style that Jean Lanvin, you might have heard of that brand, it's still around today, it was really well known for, and then it has this very Art Deco um, detailing and embellishment here on the dress. I've also pulled two different examples of Balenciaga. Just to show you, we have the full range. So we have this um, silk bomber jacket from the early 2000s, and then we also have 
this little mini dress from fall 1966, which was one of Cristobal Balenciaga's final collections. And you can see here it has um, a really menswear silhouette. It almost looks like a man's vest in the back. And then it has these great pockets in the front somewhere. Uh, I picked a couple of personal favorites of mine. Um, this is uh, Azadine Alaya. Uh, you may be more familiar with his clingy knits um, that were like very body conscious uh, dresses. But this is actually a printed vinyl, and it's a really unusual material for this designer. But it does feature some of his signature detailing, like uh, corset lacing on the skirt. So it's a mini skirt and a, like a bomber jacket attire. And I also have uh, pulled some Patrick Kelly, who is an African-American designer, uh, who was big in the 80s. And uh, these pieces are from um, the late 80s, and they feature some French fabrics. He was one of the only American couturiers to show in Paris. Um, and a couple other great fabric choices were these for this pair of pants that are studded with little rhinestones in a classic wool plaid. Very high-waisted, very cool silhouette. And then a signature look of his as well, uh, which is uh, the denim overall, which he was uh, known for wearing in his personal wardrobe, but he also translated them into the um, great silhouettes for um, day looks. And they're really modeled on the classic um, overalls. And finally, we have a selection of Versace pieces. We happen to have an amazing selection of Versace, both in the permanent collection and in the study collection. Um, these are always favorites with the students, so we just wanted to give you a little sneak peek of what you might see here at the Fitta Museum. We have another motorcycle jacket and skirt ensemble, and this is from the really, really famous safety pin collection of 1994. So all of these safety pins have the Versace logo of the Medusa head um, emblazoned on them. And then the belt also features the Greek key, which is another uh, Versace typical logo that they would incorporate. And I wish you could feel this leather. It is like butter. It, it is, is the softest, softest leather. leather. <laughs> we also have here a corset. So in the 90s, we had really had that underwear as outerwear look. If you think about Madonna going on concert, um, this is definitely along those lines, but it's really beautifully made and kind of a, no a nod to the 1950s bullet bra with the stitching. Um, I don't know if you can see that in the video uh, that you see here on top of the cups, but really, really beautifully made and fully boned, but just meant to be worn on the outside as a top, as a little bustier. This dress is very well, <laughs> very well placed pockets here on the bodice. Um, you can see my hand through this sheer panel of chiffon. Um, at the Fitta Museum, we also have uh, a collection of runway photographs called the Michelle Arnaud Fashion Photography Archive. And so we happen to have a photograph of Kate Moss wearing this dress on the runway. Um, so you can see it has a really beautiful back. The zipper is here, again with those Medusa heads on the straps. Um, and then just perfectly placed pockets to um, cover, cover whatever needs to be covered there. And then last but not least, we have this from, um, this is actually from Versace Versus, which is the Versace Diffusion line. And it definitely has that 1990s does the 1960s feel to it, the little mini hem and the sparkly materials. Um, it's a really simple silhouette, just a couple of princess seams here in the front. Uh, but the material is very, very 90s. It's um, sort of a heat-treated uh, plastic here. I'm going to do an extreme close-up so you can get an idea. And it would have really sparkled quite nicely under those club nights. So this is definitely like that 90s clubbing. Um, for any Romy and Michelle fans, this really <laughs> reminds me of that look of <laughs> costume designer Mona May. We've pulled just a couple of special collections items for you to see here. In our special collections, we have ephemera, photographs, sketches, archives, catalogs really pieces that help us interpret the materials in our collection and that includes magazines and fashion plates which Lee is going to pull out for you here which would be featured in women's magazines in the 19th century. 
Thank you for joining us for this tour of the Fitta Museum storage area. We hope you've enjoyed it as much as we have. You can always find us online at fidmmuseum.org. We do have um, part of our collection digitized so you can browse our online collections. And you can also find us on social media at FIDM Museum. We have our unboxing series that we mentioned as well as um, a bi-monthly collection conversation on Instagram and a five-minute fashion series that you can find on our YouTube page along with lots of interviews with costume designers, exhibition materials, documentaries. Um, so go head to our YouTube channel and poke around a little bit. And I will see you all later for our conversation with costume designer Mayas Rubio. And if anybody has any questions, I'm happy to take them now. Thanks Thank for you. watching.